Hello, welcome back to another video. So today I'll be showing you how I created this multi-material effect using just the stock hot end on a Prusa Mark III. So there are a couple of upgrades out there for 3D printers that allow you to use multiple materials in a single print. But the most notable ones are the Mosaic Manufacturing Palette 2 and the Prusa 3D multi-material upgrade. However, both of these upgrades do have their own drawbacks and their own issues. The MMU2 from Prusa, for example, is almost always on back order. And when you are able to get one, there's a ton of troubleshooting and trial and error involved before you can get it to print reliably on its own without you intervening. The palette, on the other hand, is reliable and easy to use, but this does come at a price which starts at about $500. Now, I just want to use this to embed text or designs on a flat surface, and both of these machines are pretty much overkill for that, given that they're designed for more complex multi-material prints like ones that need soluble supports. So I'm calling my solution the MMMU, the Manual Multi-Material Upgrade. And to set this up, we're gonna get right into Prusa Slicer. So first you'll go to the printer dropdown menu and then select add slash remove printers. And now the configuration assistant will pop up on the screen. And from here, you can choose whichever printer you're using. I am doing this on the Mark 3S with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so I'll go ahead and select that. So that's all we need to do in the configuration assistant. So you can go ahead and hit finish at the bottom and we can exit out of this. Now you can go back to that printer dropdown menu and select the one we just added. So for me, it is the original Prusa Mark 3S. Once you have the new profile selected, you can go to the top of the screen in Prusa Slicer and select printer settings. In this new page, you're gonna go to general and then capabilities. And in the capabilities section, you'll see an option for a number of extruders. Here you can increase this to match the number of colors you want in the print. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to four. Also, once you have the number of extruders set in general, go over to custom G-code on the left side, and then under tool change G-code, you're gonna type in M600. Once you have the number of extruders set, you can go to the top of the screen and hit the save icon, and this will allow you to save the profile for future use so you don't have to go back and change the number of extruders again. All right, so now that we have the profile set for the printer, we can go into the print settings tab at the top of the screen and make some adjustments there as well. So once you click on print settings, you can go to multiple extruders on the left column. And once you're here, you can see that there is a wipe tower option in the main screen of the page. You can go ahead and disable the wipe tower. Since we're manually changing the filament at every change, we don't need the printer to create a wipe tower and purge in between each color. That would just be a waste of filament and time. Now, once you have the wipe tower disabled, you can go ahead and save the print profile at the top of the screen. All right, so now that we have all the profiles set, we can head back to the play and get ready to print these parts. So when you drag on multiple STLs that make up the same object, Prusa Slicer will detect this and ask you if it's a multi-part object. So you can just go ahead and click yes on this dialog box that pops up. So since we hit yes on that dialog box, you can see that all of the files we dragged on are now considered components of the main part. Now before we assign the extruders to each part so we can set the colors, be sure to assign different colors to each extruder. If they're all the same, it is gonna be kind of hard to visually tell in Prusa Slicer. Now that I have the colors all assigned to the extruders, I'm gonna go ahead and choose which parts I want to be which color. I usually start with the smallest feature on extruder one since that'll print first, and then the largest section, which is gonna be like the main body of the part, as the last extruder, in this case, extruder three. I do this because I want the small details to print and then I can use the main body to kind of cover it up and attach them all together. So in this case, I'm gonna have the logo and the outline print in extruders one and two, and then I'll have the main body of the part, which is the circle, print last. Also, I know these files have colors assigned to them, but I did end up changing my mind with how I wanted it to look. All right, so the last key part of this process is that you have to flip the part upside down. I do this so I can have all of the color changing and the filament swapping right at the start of the print, and then I can leave immediately after that's done and I don't have to worry about coming back later on. So once you have the part oriented, you have all the extruders selected and you have all the colors assigned, you can go ahead and hit slice now at the bottom of the screen. And from here, you can just make sure it all looks good. All of the colors are printing in the right order. The part is in the right orientation and then you can hit export to G-code and we can take it to the printer. So before you head over to the printer, be sure to keep in mind the order of the colors that you had set. So in this case, it would be extruder one is black, extruder two is red, and extruder three is white. The LCD only prompts you to change the filament when it's time to change it, but it doesn't tell you which color to change it to. But the print will go in order starting with filament one. So after the printer finishes bed leveling, it'll ask you to change the filament, and this is when it's asking you for filament one. And once it finishes the first layer with filament one, it'll ask you to switch to filament two, and then so on and so forth until you hit the last extruder color, which in this case will be filament three. Once you've changed it to filament three, it'll print that part of the first layer and then move on and print the second layer starting with extruder three and then work its way back down to one. This is a little confusing, but it does make sense when you see it on the printer itself. Now that we have the G code on the SD card, we can go ahead and start the print. Once the bed leveling is done, the printer will prompt you to change the filament. Now this is where you'll go ahead and put in the first color of filament, like I mentioned before, that you had assigned to extruder one. 
After the printer is done printing the first color, you can swap out to the next color, which in this case is going to be red. Now you can do the swap for the last color of the first layer. I really like this method for simple designs or text on small objects, but it does take a long time if you have multiple color swaps because you'll have to sit there and watch the first couple of layers or however many layers thick your embedded design is. All right, so you can see the printer is now done with the first layer. So it's gonna now move on to the second layer using that last filament color that it already had. Now we just repeat the whole process in the reverse order for the colors on the second layer. And it took a little bit of effort, but the part is finally done. All right, so overall this method is super helpful when you wanna just add some text or a really small design to just a flat surface. However, I wouldn't recommend using this for any designs in the Z axis since this would require you to go in and manually change that filament for every single layer rather than for the first two layers like we have in this example. But it is super fun to be able to get these creative designs and really cool text embossing on the first couple of layers using just a stock Prusa. I've tried the Prusa MMU2 in the past and it was just a hassle. I always had print issues where it wouldn't finish. I had to intervene and manually pull the filament out. And I haven't given the palette a shot yet for Mosaic Manufacturing but I do want to give that a try sometime in the future. Also, if you don't use Prusa Slicer, I'll be sure to link a video down in the description by Make Anything. He shows you a similar technique in Simplify 3D and I think also in Cura. Also, if you're interested in seeing how I design parts in Fusion 360 to be printed like this, be sure to subscribe. I have a few projects coming up where I'll be using this technique again. And if you're interested, here's a video about 3D printing and here is a video YouTube thinks you'll like best.